Hi, everybody. It's so nice to have you here. Two artists in a museum. It's perfect, right? Yeah. <laughs> so perfect. Um, there's so much that we could talk about tonight. And I thought that it would be great to start and focus on the ways that both of you use both use and confront stereotypes and bias in your artwork. And Marilyn, let's start with you because your paintings, your photographs, your videos explore very complex and sometimes contradictory emotions around beauty and the feminine body in the Ameri and in American culture. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, um, as an artist, I try and make a picture of the times we live in, and they are very, um, they're paradoxical. And so I'm, you know, there is, I don't want to be an illustrator. I'm not telling you what to think. Right. But, uh, you know, the, the culture gives you images that give you tremendous pleasure, but at the same time creates body dysmorphia. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of contempt for fashion and glamour, uh, but it's one of, it's a billion, jillion dollar industry and it gives women power. It's one of the few places women have power. So I want both of those, you know, contradictory things in all my work. I don't want to tell you, I want it to be multiple readings and I want to take a picture that you know is true, but maybe you've never seen it before. Like if you pull your socks down, you'll have le legs, you'll have lines on your, on your ankles and your, on your uh, calves. But you know, you, and that's something you know is real, but you, I, I try to make that picture. I just use that one because everyone knows what that looks like. We should, yeah. I know what it looks like to have lines all over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I am. Exactly. I'm with you. Pantyhose. Yeah. <laughs> Leanne, That's a let's real talk thing. about um, yeah. <clears throat> the work brown, carmine, and and blue. You called it a love letter to yourself. Tell everybody a little bit about that body of work and what that meant to you. Yeah, of course. Um, so that body of work, again, yes, it's a love letter to myself. And I say that because I put everything that I have within me into that work. Um, to give you a, a glimpse, it was over the course of three weeks where I was doing performance pieces, using my body to kind of understand um, these feelings of trauma, these feelings of loss, um, and also using videos to have myself, my actual presence there in the space. Um, and I really wanted to focus on how the black men and women are depicted in media um, because ultimately I feel like that was a, a small trauma that I was constantly like dealing with this idea that I was depicted in a negative light in all of these you know social media and t well, TV ads and just different things like that um, and wanting to reverse that wanting to find a way to reframe how I see my own self um, and so I was really looking to kind of dissect that, dismantle those things, um, and also using my body to kind of like have a better understanding of who I am and ultimately just find this place of joy and love and peace and, and really focus on uh, giving someone this, the black experience in a way that they've never seen before, this idea of like understanding that I have people around me supporting me, I have love for my family, and all of those things are beautiful and all those things actually define who I am. You know, I would imagine three weeks of performance art that that must have in and of itself been a cathartic experience for yes, you. Definitely, it was. Um, it was times where I was in the space and performing and I just would break down and start crying. But I really wanted to focus on uh, giving all of myself into the work because I wanted to connect with the viewer in that way and show them that it's okay to be vulnerable right. um, and it's okay to be true to who you are. No question about it. Marilyn, your work showcases all types of women, all parts of the body. Talk to us about the stereotypes that you are trying to subvert in your work. Well, the biggest stereotype is um, I'm not interested in making another pretty face or another pretty picture of uh, <clears throat> the, 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 what you're used to. I'm I'm, the models I work with are pretty interesting. I lo look for... You know, unless I'm doing a commercial job where they force me to use a certain model, I look for people that have character into their faces, and, and I, I, I'm really interested in, in people that are going to look like they're, they're from, you know, the, honestly, the future. I love mixed race people. I love Japanese and um, Irish and uh, black girls mixed up all together with freckles on their face. You know, they just look like people from the future. And, um, and so, I, you know, it's like, I'm still trying to tell the story of the times we live in, 
but I sort of like, I, I'm allergic to nostalgia. Mm. And I'm, I, I think of, uh, you know, on everything I do, I think of how I can portray what, what, what we're living like, what our life is like right now. <clears throat> it's, it's really interesting because you're talking about the stereotypes that you're trying to subvert. Leandra, I'm curious as you think about busting of stereotypes and in particular add in the black female identity piece to that conversation. Yeah, I mean that's a huge part of my work is uh, really speaking to the black female experience because that's who I am. Um, and so I'm literally just thinking about I feel like a lot of times, you know, even growing up, there was always this, this point that was made that you have to be kind of more than yourself to be heard, to be seen, to be visible, specifically as a black woman, you know, living in this country. And so within my work, I really just want to get across this message that all you have to do is just be yourself. You know, being is enough. That's a huge mantra that I, I always tell myself and I always like try to incorporate in my work is that being exactly who you are is enough and that is enough for you to, you know, demand respect, demand honor and demand visibility in the spaces that you're in. Um, and so really just focusing again on that, this idea of vulnerability within my work, I really push that across because I want the viewer, I want whoever encounters my work to understand that it's okay to be vulnerable, it's okay to cry, it's okay to be angry, all of these different things that are stereotypes for black women, like you can't be this angry black woman. No, it's okay to be angry. That shows that you have emotion and that shows that you're human. Right, and people get angry. Yeah, and people get angry. Right? And no, it's such a good point. Michelle Obama writes about it in her, exactly. in her book, which it's is beautiful. so wonderful. And she really, you know, you're, you're reading, you're like, yeah. Yes. People get angry. Exactly. It's a, it's a part of being human, and it allows you to connect with another human being. Yeah, no question about it. Marilyn, as we talk about that and about human emotions and about accepting that, I was reading about a little bit about how your evolution and your feelings about other women artists and how that's really evolved for you. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, this is uh, I like telling the story whenever I teach, and uh, it's like w when you're a, an artist, you're already totally narcissistic, self-involved, and, and impossible. <laughs> Sounds good to uh, me. Yeah, <laughs> you got to be a little delusional. Embrace a little OCD. your narcissism. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and whenever I saw another artist that was really good, I just hated them. <laughs> Wanted them to die, you know. And uh, and a part of me was saying, well, just you know, let's not hang out with her, let's stay away from her. It's usually the woman, or another woman <laughs> artist. And, um, and then I got into, I don't know, doing meditation and I thought about mindfulness and opposite behavior. And I thought to my, I learned about resentments and how resentments are like a taking poison and waiting for the other person to die. <laughs> and I thought, I don't want this. I don't want this in my life. Yeah. And so I said, okay, so I started doing this experiment, and whenever I saw another artist that's pretty good, instead of ignoring them or putting them down or saying negative things, which is what I wanted to do, <laughs> I went over and I said, I really love your work. I think you're a really good artist. Would you actually have, would you really feel that way? Or you well, just if doing I liked that as the work. Exercise? It, no, <laughs> if I knew they were both. Okay. Because I knew, if I knew that they were good, I, it was easy. If I thought they were just, you know, okay, it's a lot harder. But <laughs> I, I didn't do it if I didn't like the work. I didn't do it if I didn't like okay, the work. Good but I never hated anyone whose work I didn't like. Mm -hmm. I only hated, <laughs> only hated people that were my competitors. So you wanted to be somebody as an artist yeah. who was hated by Marilyn Minter. Yeah. Yes. I it's it. like my <laughs> best compliment. Yeah, right. I'm so I got jealous it. of what but you how just did. You, did. Marilyn, how did you get that? Well, this over is that. what happens. Yeah. No, this is the, this is the trick of the whole thing. The minute you say, I love your work, you make your mouth say those words, the poison drains. Mm. It disappears. And then they're my colleagues. And now my best friends are really great, famous artists. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, and I do it with boys, too. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, Marilyn, thank you for being honest about that, because sometimes we as women can be each other's our DNA. worst enemies. Yeah, they yeah. were supposed to and compete we've with gotta, us. And yeah. we've got to not only embrace <clears throat> our own ambition, we've got to embrace everybody else's. It's opposite behaviors. Too. Right. Opposite behaviors. Like you want to, like the, this culture builds up women really a lot, like Hillary and like, tra and like <clears throat> what's her name? Taylor Swift, mm -hmm. Lena Dunham, just to tear them down. Yeah. You know, we have to like just not automatically accept that. No, it's a really good point. Leandra, how do you support women artists? 
Yeah. You're not, you don't do what Marilyn does. Well, <laughs> I will say maybe kind of. Maybe not the, you know, the, the remarks on, you, I hated them, but you know. But, um, but I, I really like what Marilyn said because I think that this idea of affirmation is really important. And when I think about how I can support other women artists, is just constantly affirming them and letting them know, like, hey, like, you are awesome. Like, what you're doing is great. I love your work. I love everything that you're doing. You know, I, I love you. That's why I love the millennials. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're, they're more accepting. They're more accepting that's, of I think their that's peers. true. Yeah. yeah. I think that's right. The, the, my generation, not a chance. <laughs> yeah. No, I, Marilyn, I think, you're, I, think you're, I think you're right. You know, Leandra, there's a quote that you've shared, a Toni Morrison quote, which I'm going to read. The function of freedom is to free someone else, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. It's very powerful. That's uh, one of my favorite quotes, and it's something that I constantly um, like say in the back of my head because it's a reminder that you, know, you can get to a certain point, but how are you helping someone else who was once in your position get to that point as well? Um, I think that's a powerful testament to this idea of building a village. And I feel like as women, you know, we have to have a village around us, supporting us, constantly uplifting us. I know when I was growing up, my village was my family. My mother and my grandmother constantly told me, Leandra, you're going to be someone. Back then, I was like, what does that mean? I'm, I'm no one. But I think by them you continuously saying that, you know, it allowed me to really believe in myself and love who I am and know that I am going to be someone. And I am someone already, even if I don't do anything. That's, that's, but it is so important. You don't have to accomplish something yeah. to be somebody. Exactly. And that's something that's really powerful. So we are here tonight because we are all embracing our ambition, right, everybody? <laughs> yeah. Um, Marilyn, in interviews, you have said that you are the last person in the world anyone would have ever think would be successful. All true. Ha <laughs> Very bad education. Well, surprise. <laughs> Very bad education. Um, I was a pretty wild kid. You I were. I was never the least. I was the least likely to ever succeed, but. I think on some level, uh, being underestimated works for me. Because <laughs> I was really ambitious. <laughs> and, um, and I would always just, you know, I have a setback maybe, but defeat never. Hmm. I always had a vision, I always stuck to my guns. And like you said, I'm, I, I don't care if I'm somebody, but I'm gonna be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're making a product, you're making art, you're making, you're trying to communicate. And, um, and, if, and if you have a dialogue, that is success, even if you don't make any money. You're having a dialogue with other artists. Right. It's a good life. Right. No, that, yeah. that's true. Um, that's true. So, Landry, the same, uh, the same question for you, which is, how did you learn, ultimately? You touched on it just a little bit, but how did you learn, ultimately, to embrace that, your own ambition? Because we are taught um, that that's a dirty word. Mm. Even when I came out tonight and I was going to say good evening, I thought, you know what, I'm going to introduce myself and say I'm an ambitious woman. And I actually couldn't do it, mm. right? Oh, yeah. And this. So I have no trouble with that one. Well, no, I, I, <laughs> so I'm going to say it. I'm an ambitious woman. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, Leandra, tell us how you ultimately learned to do that. Yeah, well, I think about this story when I was in college um, at the Savannah College of Art and Design in Atlanta. Um, I went to a, an opening, and I saw this lady across the room. She had this like very vibrant energy, and she was coming towards me. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, she's gonna talk to me. I don't know who this is, but I don't want to talk." <laughs> Scary. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and she came up to me, and the question was, "What do you do?" And I think that's a hard question to answer a lot of times because, especially if you're trying to figure it out, you're like, "Well, what do I do?" And so I was like, "Oh, you know, I shoot photos here and there. I, you know, I'm a photographer." And she's like, "So you're an artist?" And when she said that, it was That's like, interesting. am I an artist? And I was looking at her with my eyes wide, and I was like, yeah, I'm yeah. an artist. <laughs> and I think in that moment, that's when I realized that I have to own who I am, you it's, know? And I have to speak that truth in every way possible. So, it's so true. So when you bring that up, Marilyn, I'm curious. When it comes to owning I am an artist, um, What's the biggest stereotype you think has to be debunked when it comes to being an artist? I thought about this a lot. I think about this a lot. Um, first of all, if you're just an artist, not a black artist or a woman artist or an Asian artist, uh, that, you know, and then 
uh, the hardest one for me is I know women who changed art history have been written out of art history. Like Helen Frankenthal, I just read this sure. book, Ninth Street Women. I mean, she changed art history with uh, stain painting, but but uh, ro but um, Morris Lewis and Kenneth Nolan just le walked right over her and got famous. Many for of it. the women artists write of that yeah. of that moment, and that's the stereotype. Well, women don't change art history. Well, yeah, they do. And Cindy Sherman, there's not a there's nobody that isn't uh, uh, can make a photograph today without the whole history of Cindy Sherman mm -hmm. behind them. So, I mean, maybe it just changed in the 70s when women had real opportunities for the first time. But I bet you that, you know, in his art historically, there must be, probably, you know, there was no opportunity. But 1970s really changed that. They started not erasing women from history, even though they've always been present. You know, they've always been students. I read biographies all the time. Matisse always had female students. Everyone had students that were female. That's interesting. Yeah, you don't even know that if you look at art, art history. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Both of you actually, there's a commonality in, in your work in that you're both engaging in and taking on difficult conversations, for sure. Leandra, I'm curious, how do you engage in those difficult conversations? How do you approach that in, in your work? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because I feel like I can't shy away from those difficult conversations because everything about who I am it, it turns into a difficult conversation. I mean, we're talking about blackness, we're talking about womanhood. These are you know, things as far as identity that has been continuously ostracized. Um, and so I'm thinking about you know, when I am making work, I do wanna confront the viewer because I want the viewer to feel uncomfortable. And if you aren't uncomfortable, then maybe you can empathize with you know, what I'm speaking to and maybe it's something that you've also gone through or something you've also dealt with. Um, and so, you know, those conversations, even though they may be difficult, it's something that I feel like is my responsibility as an artist because it's a part of everything who I am, every fiber of me. Yeah, no, it's exactly, that's, that, that's right. And Marilyn, same question for you. How do you engage in those well, difficult conversations? Uh, well, you know, I want to grow and change. You know, and I want, and if you want to grow and change, you have to have difficult conversations. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I could accept that sometimes there's no answers. And I can accept paradox. I really believe in paradox. I think that's, we're working in the gray areas. Things aren't black and white. But if you have these conversations and the language gets created, like, you know, trans True. is now a word we use. That wasn't even a word people accepted or talked about or, you know, and that was like 10 years ago. Yeah, this was a, a, a new word in the conversation. Yeah. And, and now it's like, oh yeah, they're everywhere. You know, and that's like, these conversations, as long as you're honest and you try and tell your truth, people can feel it if you're lying, you know, you, or you're just saying platitudes or you're just not trying to be part of a conversation and just escaping it. And I, you know, some, they're my best conversations and the ones I like the best, even though they're the hardest. I was about to say, even though they can be, without a doubt, some of the most difficult ones. In the time that we have remaining, Marilyn, let me, let me ask you first. To the women in the audience, the artists, whether you're a, you know, a professional artist, an aspiring artist, um, or an artist in your own personal way, what is the best advice that you have? Well, to be a, uh, an artist, do you mean? Don't do it unless you have no choice. <laughs> 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 you got to be you really used to rejection. You got to, that's true, you yeah. got thick skin, right? Yeah, and um, you have to uh, get a lot of pleasure out of what you're doing. Mm. Otherwise, you'll give up. Right. So go where it feels good. Leandra, <clears throat> same question to you. Yeah, um, just be yourself and speak your truth. I mean, I think that's the most important thing. Like Marilyn said, you know, if you are bring, being true to you, um, people who are encountering or interacting with your work or with you in general will feel that. Um, and so I think that's the best advice I can, I can give is to just speak your truth. Where can people see, learn more about both of your work? Landra, let me begin with you. Yeah, um, well, my website is uh, llasore.com. Um, that has all of my work there. Um, and then I also have my email address there. So if anyone wants to shoot me an email, that's there you totally go. fine. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Marilyn. <laughs> I serve this one up to you. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Go to my gallery, I guess. 
I want to thank both of you so much. I'm such a fan of both of your work. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Marilyn Minter, Leandra Lesore, thank you both so much. And thanks to all of you uh, for joining us for this little discussion. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>